worship with us. Um, been working on a, ser- a series of cultivating healthy community. And uh, the first week we, lo- we looked and talked about staying connected to the vine of Christ. And that if we, we fail to stay connected, that we will, we will fail to produce the fruits that we're supposed to produce. And last week we looked at cultivating our soil and the soil around us. That even hard soil can be broken up and be tended to and prepared for the good word to take seed and to grow. And that we need to work in our own lives and in other people's lives around us through being who Christ wants us to be to cultivate those soils. And this week, we're going to look at cultivating healthy community by growing together. And this isn't agriculture growing. This is the physical growing of the body together. Because church church is all about numbers, right? No, it's not. But... Today is our, is our annual business meeting, and we're going to be looking at the numbers of where we're at and how God has blessed us this year and, and where we're moving, uh, looking forward to where God's going to keep blessing us as a church. It's not about the numbers, but the num- numbers show the truth and the proof that God is working in our midst and in our numbers through growth. And uh, sometimes that means people are growing closer to God, and sometimes that means more people coming to experience and know who God is. But growth is an important part. In nature, if something is not growing, it's dying. And also can be true if we're growing in the wrong way, that can be healthy as well. Um, Sometimes I like to eat too much of the wrong things, and you grow in the wrong directions in that. And the thing is, in the church, we can grow in the wrong directions sometimes too. We can grow inward and, and focused on ourselves as the body and not outwardly in growing into the world. And today I want us to look at growing and, and being who God wants us to be, seeking others and bringing others in to the, the community. And the fact is this, our growth is fueled by grace. Because why, why do we seek Christ? Forgiveness. We all need it, and if we've accepted Christ, we've accepted it. The Christian life is a response to the greatest gift ever given. The life of Jesus poured out for our sins because his grace abounds. His grace is greater than anything you have done wrong or failed to do. His grace is greater than the worst of crimes and the worst of selfishness. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The 2 Corinthians 5.21. So our purpose statement as a church is this, seeking to be Christ's followers empowered in our discipleship, fellowship, and worship. If you've been around here some, you've heard me preach about this and bring it up every once in a while. We're to be seekers of Christ in everything that we do as a church and as individuals. And the only way we can do that is to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we must always be seeking to be discipled ourselves and to disciple others. Fellowship, we must come together and lift one another up into the presence of God. When two or more are gathered in His name, He is there with us. And then worship. Our whole life is to be set apart in seeking to worship Christ with its entirety. So growing together, we're one in Christ. Galatians 3, 26 through 28 says this, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God, through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into, into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ. The way the world views one another is not how God in Christ views us. There is no hierarchy. There is no better off because of the family they're they're born into. No one is any better because of how smart they are. And no one is any worse because of how much inability they have. 
because of Christ and in him we are all equals it means all life has value whether it has value in the world's eye or not in God's eye it has value and that should lead us and guide us in everything we do as Christians it should allow us to see the world in a completely different way than those who do not know the hope that we have and it can be a struggle and it can be hard at times to do that. But we are one in Christ. We are to be agents of change. Every, every, every Christ follower is called to be an agent of reconciliation to God. Because Jesus was and is our, our agent of reconciliation. Because he loved us, we are to love one another. Jesus Christ reconciled us to the Father and therefore we are to reconcile one another to Christ and be one with the Father as well. You see, the mistake that gets made sometimes is we think we're to be better Christians to secure something for ourselves. When what we're to be is to be more loving Christ's followers and seekers seeking to reconcile others to Christ. And when we do that, we draw closer and nearer to God ourselves because we're outwardly focused and not focused on self. How can we ever be God, <clears throat> God's agent of reconciliation? The first, the dead are now alive in Christ. Second, we regard no one according to the flesh. You see, the world standard is a fleshly standard. It's man's standard. God's standard is above and greater than that. Third, we are a new creation in Christ. And four, we're reconciled to God through Christ. The dead are now alive in Christ. When you see someone who's hurt or broken or clearly not within the faith, often... As Christians, we tend to look at them and see them for their brokenness. When the truth is, anyone who does not have Christ is dead. And that should break our hearts and bring tears to our eyes. And bring a desire for us to bring life to them. When people don't know who Christ is and they're not living for Christ... They're literally dead men and women walking. Because no matter how much success they have in this world, no matter how much they can acquire, no how many, how many good times they have, without Christ it will come to an end. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all. Therefore, therefore all have died, and he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Jesus died on the cross so that we all might die to the flesh. And that we all might be raised in the spirit of his love and grace. It's the only hope for the world. Our hope is not in laws and in government, but our hope is in Christ because of what he has done for us and the, pi the price he paid for us. We regard no one according to the flesh. Judge not lest we be judged by the same accord. It's easy to say we don't need to judge, but we do it naturally sometimes because of a situation, because of a hurt, or whatever it is, we tend to look at people as greater than ourselves or lower than ourselves. And not through Christ's eyes that we're all in this together seeking a new hope. From now, now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. 
Because when he was raised from the grave, there was a transformation, not only of Christ, but of this world. The debt was paid to sin. Death no longer reigned. And no longer do we need to see people for what the flesh is. That's why there's no more Greeks or Jews or male or female because of what Christ has done for us on the cross. We are a new creation in Christ. I'm guessing that there's no one in this world that thinks they have had everything their whole life put together perfectly. I'm guessing that everyone in this world has done something, said something, or been through something that they put themselves through that they wish they would not have done or had to deal with the consequences of. And some in this room are probably like me and so glad no one ever knows about that or this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. That is what we can get up and celebrate every day as Christians. No matter of the failures of yesterday, no matter of the pressure and the hurts and the pains that are in the future, we can get up each and every morning and know that we are new and afresh in Jesus Christ. That we are a new creation in Christ. Reconciled to God through Christ. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. I think this is something that we tend to not see as such an important thing in our Christian walk. It's easier for us to concentrate on the things we need to do, the things we need to read, the prayers we need to have, then it is that we need to understand, remember, and live by this standard that God has put on us. That we are to reconcile others to Christ because Christ has reconciled us to the Father. You may be the only Jesus someone else ever knows or sees through a clear lens. You see, it would be crazy of us to think that for the name of Jesus that horrible things haven't been done in the world's history. It would be crazy of us to think that sometimes maybe we ourselves haven't got focused on the wrong things in our Christendom and put a yoke or pressure on someone that God never intended for them. And the fact is this, sometimes we have put our own pressures on ourselves that have kept us from having the joy that Christ intends for us to have. You see, we're to to live in the freedom of our salvation. We're not to use that that freedom to just go and, and do and live however we want, but we have a freedom to love those who are around us. We have a freedom to be like Jesus was as he called Zacchaeus down off the tree and went to his house and interacted with the lowly of society for a Jewish rabbi. That we will be willing to put ourselves at risk so that others will know who Christ is that we will remember everything that we have ever been given is a gift from God for us to share with the world around us. That we won't hold on to it with fear of losing it, but we'll open our hands and give it freely so our arms and hands will be open to receive so much more from God. You see, that's what it means to be an agent of reconciliation. We don't focus on ourselves and protecting ourselves, but we look to live outwardly to celebrate what Christ has done for us, to be an example of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. I had a very strange week this week. 
Um, probably the most strange is the only word I could come up with for the week. But it was a it was full of blessing after blessing but of also just like being wore down. And by Tuesday evening, I was just about ready to just weep because of some of the things that were going on. And I had, ne- I had never hunted on opening day before. And Tuesday night, I was like, I'm getting up early and I'm going out tomorrow. And about three in the afternoon, after not seeing anything at all, which was okay because that mean I, meant I didn't have to do any work, I got to a point where I just, I relaxed, and I just felt a spirit come upon me that just opened my eyes to how good God is. And it wasn't because of anything but other than sitting and being silent. And not being silent because I was hunting. I was really just trying to stay warm and and relax. And God just spoke to me in that moment. And it just brought a clarity over the, the couple days before that and, and the busyness, busyness that's been going on. And there, with, with me, there was a little bit of this, okay, how am I still going to get everything done that I need to get done this week? We've got the business meeting. I have someone to baptize. I have a message to still get done. And God was said, don't worry about that. Just keep being willing to be who I need you to be in the times I need you to be there. You see, I walked into a room this week with a young lady who was, who was dying. And during that moment, God made a shift within me to where all I could do was love on those who were around me. And then later that day, we had someone in the hospital that I went and visited with and those things can, can draw energy out of you. But on Wednesday when I was sitting in that blind, those things filled me with joy. Because somehow, some way, God took an old bricklayer. And one thing about masonry and bricklaying is you get to use very colorful language quite often and most of the guys I worked with were really hard rough tough guys and that was just kind of the norm but God took a guy that was a bricklayer and made it so where he could walk into the room one day with someone who's dying and would be filled with hope and love because of Christ and Christ alone you see we are all on that same path none of us will get out of this life alive and our only hope the only hope we have is in Christ and Christ alone and if we have that hope how can we not share that hope how can we not want the world to know that hope that we have a hope that, that exceeds the world standard a hope that will defeat the hardest of times And I know there's some of you in this room that are going through the crucible of life. There's medical issues, financial issues, family issues. Let's face it, we all have our issues. But the hope that we have in Christ is greater than any of those issues that we have. And we must remember that. And we must remember that we are agents of reconciliation to God Almighty because he has adopted us into his family and we are his sons and daughters therefore we are ambassadors for Christ that is in Christ 
God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his, <clears throat> his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. You see, the problem, I think, is this. We think at times we need to reconcile ourselves to God when He has already reconciled us with Him. We think we need to make up for a wrong that we've, we've done when all we need to do is rece receive and accept His grace. You see, some of us in this room still might be holding on to some mistakes we made years ago. And we're still letting those mistakes have control over a certain part of our life. Instead of letting go and understanding that we are one with God because of the Christ. Died on the cross and was raised from the grave and he has paid the price in full. We no longer need to deal with our past, but we can move forward in the spirit of hope because we've been reconciled with God. It means the price has been paid. The debt is no more. It is finished. We are God's agents of reconciliation. The dead are now alive in Christ. We regard no one according to the flesh. We look at no one because of their brokenness, but we look at them with hope that they can be alive in Christ. We are a new creation in Christ. Our past no longer needs to drag and hold us down, but we can start every day anew and fresh in Christ. We are reconciled to God through Christ. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, we just give you praise for this day. Lord, we thank you for the hope that we have in you. Lord, I thank you that my hope is not in who I am. But my hope is what, in what you are through me. Lord, will you continue to make me into the conduit that you desire me to be? Lord, fill my heart with love when I want to be filled with the flesh. Lord, give me peace when the world wants me to see nothing of hope. Lord, give me the strength when I am weak. And Lord, help me always to know that you are the rock of my salvation. And may I be empowered to be the reconciler, reconciler to you that you desire me to be. As for each and every one of us in this room, Lord, in Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. Amen. Let's stand.